Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this afternoon's meeting of Prosperous Overview and Scrutiny C Committee. Um, we'll get straight on with the agenda. Apologies, Jonathan. I have apologies, Chairman, from uh, Philip Haddon, uh, Philip Hudson, Bernard Williams, Reverend Michael Metcalf, and Jessica Shulman. Thank you. And Ian Lawson. Ian, Ian Lawson, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, item two, any declarations of interest from members? No. Item three, minutes of the meeting held on the 28th of February 2022. Are you happy that that's a true record and I can sign them off? Thank you. Okay, we'll go straight on to item four, which is the County Economic Strategy, and this is the report of the Deputy Leader and Cabinet Member for Economy and Skills, Councillor Philip White, who is online. Welcome, Philip. Hi, Chair. Hello. It's over to you to introduce, Philip. Yeah, no, that's absolutely fine. So just... Um, uh, I know you're aware, Tina, but just so that others are aware, I'm not very well. Um, uh, just waiting for uh, waiting for a COVID test to come back, so that's why I'm not with you today. Um, for the same reason, um, I'm going to ask um, Daryl to um, to present the uh, the overview of the strategy, and then I'll answer questions. Um, but I think you'll get a better overview from him today rather than me. Okay, Chair. Shall I uh, take over? Thank you. Okay, well, afternoon, everyone. Nice to see you in person. And apologies, I wasn't at the last meeting. I think I was ill on the last one. <laughs> That's not a pattern for the year. <clears throat> so um, the strategies come in draft format for scrutiny to input into and shape going forward. Um, just as a bit of a reminder, um, the draft for consultation that we've got in front of us here was signed off by Cabinet last week, uh, and it goes out to consultation to all stakeholders. A really important part of that process is, of course, the scrutiny process. So the context behind the strategy, you will recall um, about two years ago as COVID really took hold, uh, the County Council developed an economic recovery, renewal and transformation strategy, which was really focused on how we support our local economy through COVID. Um, we had a number of interventions that fell out of that work as a result. And alongside those national programs, the vaccine rollout, we were actually in a much better position locally and nationally economically prior to the uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict, of course. Um, so this, this strategy has been refreshed because we find ourselves in a different position now. We have a new strategic plan which sets out our economic priorities. And the economic strategy itself reflects those with five main objectives, which I'll just draw your attention to. So they are to work um, with our partners to regenerate our town centres, number one. Number two is to support people to start and grow their businesses. Number three is developing those investment-ready projects that will be vital to, to the future of the county. Uh, number four is enabling people to be benefit from better paid local jobs, so the skills agenda. And then number five is around the corridors, strategic corridors, particularly the A50, A500 and the A38, and making sure those are corridors that enable innovation and growth of business along them. Underpinning all of that, though, is the key issue around net zero and how we support businesses towards net zero over the next few years. Now, um, I think it's clear in the strategy, but just as a reminder, those are not the only things we'll be working on within the economy over the next few years, but those are the top priorities that Cabinet have signed up to through the strategic plan. And I believe the strategic plan itself has been through the scrutiny process before it was signed off back in February. One of the other um, areas we will be focusing on over this year is the, um, the impact of supporting the economy in rural parts of Staffordshire, because we've got a large rural county as well. And we will be seeing over the next few months a draft rural economic strategy being produced for consultation as well. So that really recognises that we've got some differing issues in different parts of the county and, and picking out those key priorities that we'll need to tackle in the rural areas of Staffordshire. You'll be aware that we bring, I think it's quarterly updates now, um, to this group on how we're progressing, how the economy's progressing, how our interventions are doing and the impact that we're having. We also have a monthly economic bulletin that you should all receive that gives you the kind of state of the economy at that moment in time. 
Um, and what we're, what we're doing through that constant monitoring is making sure that we're able to respond to changing circumstances, be they the terrible circumstances we see in Ukraine at the moment or other things that inevitably happen throughout the year. So the strategy is relatively high level, um, but you probably expect that, and that gives us that flexibility to respond to changing circumstances, which I think is really important. So Cabinet last week, as I said, they signed off this draft for consultation, a key element of which is scrutiny today. We've, we've shared this with partners. I think it's been shared with all members as well for feedback and with key stakeholders with the idea that that feedback will be considered and we'll sign off a final version in the next four to five weeks. And underpinning all of this will be a delivery plan and the aim would be um, that we will be bringing you those regular updates on how we're progressing against the delivery throughout the year. So I thought I'd keep it fairly high level and then really what today is about is getting your feedback on the strategy, anything, we've, anything you think we've missed, any ideas you've got, any interventions. Thanks for that, Daryl. Um, I'll kick off first then. Um, so obviously, after having re read the report, um, what plans have we put in place to uh, monitor our uh, effectiveness and efficiency going forwards? Philip, are you going to answer or do you want Daryl to carry on? Um, no, I mean, I'm happy to answer, but I'll probably ask, I'll probably ask Daryl to... Uh, to, to chip in if I miss anything um, today. So as as it stands, we've we've purposefully not put any um, put any targets in the strategy because we think we we've got experience in the past of those being hostages to fortune, particularly as circumstances change, which we've seen um, pretty well illustrated over the last couple of years. So the um, the strategy doesn't have um, doesn't have those targets in there as as as, as numbers. Um, or KPIs, um, and that's a deliberate choice. Um, what I'll add, Chair, though, is that under the ambitions section in the strategy, you'll see that we have set out where we hope to be by 2030. So as, as Philip said, although there's no hard targets that become hostage to fortune, and we've seen the, the way inflation has gone literally in the last three months and what that can mean for the economy, what we've got is some the ambitions we want to achieve over the next eight years that gives us something to measure ourselves against but we also meet on a monthly basis with the cabinet member briefing on progress against the delivery plan that gets reported through to cabinet on a quarterly basis and we come back here on a quarterly basis to update you on progress as well so hopefully we get that kind of full picture for how we're doing against the strategy throughout the year and and secondly um how do we feel going forward with obviously rises in energy costs, rises in materials for building costs, uh, and what is going to be the community impact um, on that? Yeah. So, as you um, as you'll have heard me speaking about at um, at full council last week, obviously those um, those increases in input costs are. Um, very considerable burden on on everybody, including businesses. The the the, the question as to um, is, is, is your question really you know, how do, how do those link to the strategy? Because um, I, I do, I'm happy to answer that, or is it more of a general question about how is that going to impact business in Staffordshire? It's probably more linked to the community impact and how those costs are going to affect us as a council going forwards? Yeah, that's fine. Um, well, we're already seeing that impacting costs, aren't we, in, in terms of all of the projects that we deliver and so, so that, that, that require the, the materials or the other inputs that are increasing costs. The, the other one is um, uh, is the, the shortage in skilled labour uh, because we have such low unemployment, which is why, um, which is why that's one of our key priorities um, within the strategy. But... Um, those those are not things that we can directly influence here. We don't we don't have any control over global markets, um, and we're not funded to um, uh, to provide direct support to businesses um, to cover those increases in costs. So what we focused on in the strategy is the things that we can influence, um, whether that's directly delivering ourselves, whether it's delivering with partners, um, and then um, in addition to that, we've we've got our um, our lobbying and advocacy work which is more about influencing those who could perhaps help with those things and that, that's 
principally central government. Thank you. Councillor Hutton. Thank you, Chair. Uh, overall, I thought it was a great read, um, the strategy. There's three things I'd like to comment on. One, where you talk about um, the bro um, broadband 5G, I think you, it would be helpful to refer to Simon Tagg's uh, report that we're going to receive next month uh, in the document to make sure, so it stops people thinking, oh, where's this? And the other thing is, um, clearly, the rural strategy should also be uh, signposted at that point because 5G is absolutely crucial to a rural strategy. So that, that point out of the way, the two areas that I think are missing one is hydrogen, which gets two words. Um, I searched the whole document, mentioned twice, uh, as throwaway comments almost. The, this five, if we're going to put money into the 500 uh, A50 corridor, there is a huge opportunity here for the council, this council, to work with uh, industry and government for us to be a precursor for a hydrogen industry. We've got, uh, just across the border in Derbyshire, we've got Rolls-Royce Aerospace, we've got Toyota, who are big players in the hydrogen, uh, 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 the uh, drive, uh, if you call that the hydrogen drive chain industry. They've been putting a lot of money in Japan into this. We've got JCB, uh, we've got Bentley just over the border in Cheshire, and probably, uh, Land Rover Jaguar would be very interested in working with us as well. So we, what the county can do is have a, a plan for where we're going to have hydrogen filling stations. We've got three motorway um, places, for example, but it's not... Um, Philip, you've spoken about east-west quite a lot, and I'm totally uh, with you on that. Uh, east-west links are dire. That's why we're trying to invest in the 550 corridor. So perhaps we should be saying, well... If we get this, on the back of that, what we say, part of the, the selling this our whole idea to government is that on the back of this 550 corridor, we're happy to be the guinea pigs for hydrogen. Um, and we believe that industry will flop behind you very, very quickly. The other point, uh, just picking up on the chair's point about um, net, uh, well, fuel costs, uh, it's linked to net zero, of course, but uh, Rolls-Royce Aerospace are also looking at um, uh, these mini nuclear power stations. And I think that uh, we, in such a large rural county, there must be somewhere that we could say, well, we're happy to have one of those here and get uh, nice, cheap electricity pumped into the system for our businesses. So I, as, as we're talking strategy, we're talking future. You're talking about 2030. I think that between now and then, we've got to address all those three things in our economic strategy. Uh, whether you palm them off on, not palming off, whether you signpost the rural strategy and the infrastructure strategy that Simon Tag will be talking about on co comms, happy for that. But on the other two, I think we should be looking at that. Um, and quite frankly, uh, perhaps you should say we're looking at this, but it's going to be a separate document because it's so important. And I'd be very happy for that too. Uh, but it's something I really think we should be working on. But thank you very much. Councillor White, did you get all that? <laughs> yeah, I did. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, so some, some really good points. So on, on, the, on the linkages to the other reports, yeah. Um, I'm sure Daryl's noted that as an action. That's um, two good points. Um, regarding um, regarding hydrogen, the, the the question really is where the proper pace is for the discussion around that. I mean, I'll, I'll take away the point regarding whether we do want to expand on that a little bit more, and the right place to do it would probably be in that A50, A500 piece, as that is one of our strategic priorities. We have a general approach um, to different sectors of the economy and, and, and different specific areas of economic activity that we try not to uh, try not to pick winners. Um, we'll all be aware of the the, um, uh, the 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 graphene revolution that never happened up in the northwest, for example. So we 
what we what we're probably talking about is a question of where that where that work sits um and whether it properly sits in this as an overall economic strategy or whether it sits somewhere else likewise that question regarding um the small um the small nuclear plants um that the governments are interested in their energy strategy i think is being published next week um so i think what i'll what i'll say to you councillor hudson is that we'll we will have a look at what's in that strategy and then we'll respond to that um i probably don't need to say that politically um uh and that that's that's a small p politically i think um any conversation that we have in staffordshire about nuclear power plants is one that we will have to tread very carefully along and i'm not sure whether that is a route we would want to go down or not um, but I think the starting point is we'll see what the government's strategy is and we'll respond to that. Um, and I say that recognising that things have moved on a lot in terms of nuclear power from the uh, the sort of designs that we see in operation in this country um, at the moment, which are 30 years plus old. So I do appreciate that. Um, but hopefully that answers those points. Thank you very much. Yeah. Councillor Hussain. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, I would like to convey my best wishes to Deputy Leader for uh, and wish him a speedy recovery as well and really appreciate in these circumstances and he's sharing the screen with us. Um, thank you for that. Um, may I just seek his attention, particularly on page 19, para 1, um, which is really um, important for me when he emphasized on the better paid local jobs. I welcome this one. So. Uh, we want more better jobs as well, and um, which will not only the f uh, advance the family's uh, finance, it will also generate more income tax, which is the lifeblood for our good causes we will do. And uh, the similarly, on to, um, Chair, Chair, with your permission, I would like to make a small comment on the supporting businesses to, do, to net zero um, in, in, in our fight against the climate change in para six of page 20. Um, well, all I can emphasize, which we had a, a quick a couple of minutes conversation during the meeting on the Thursday, that I believe, and he agreed as well with me, I believe that the engagement of the small businesses, the community is really important for, for every effort we do, all these strategies and everything. And um, especially the area and town I represent is very highly diverse. And um, all these good works and everything is very hard to uh, deliver it to them and make them, with due respect to them, to, uh, you know, to make them understand what we are doing. And we want them to come with us and join us in, in this journey as well. And finally, um, finally, uh, uh, for the deputy leader's attention, may I just seek on page five, para B, when he mentioned, uh, 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 when he quite rightly mentioned the volunteering sectors as well. And, um, so far in this 18 minutes, uh, there was uh, one word was emphasized, the rising cost of living, including the, you know, the fuel cost, which is one pound 84 today the per liter. Uh, when I saw, I, I was traveling through the train when I saw in the town, which is way going over the roof. So uh, when I say volunteering, I commend the support of my local soup kitchen, food banks, and wherever it is. So I would be grateful if, you, if he can particularly make and emphasize to how to support them so that they can support those who are living under the bread line. And also, Chair, there's a new element here which is quite disturbing, which is called in-work poverty. And we came across so many teaching assistants and carers, they're also using the food banks as well. So any sort of community help and we all 62 councillors will offer, you, offer our support if you want to work with us to um, you know, the, get that support or get to, uh, to point out what we need is to single out those community organizations so that we can help together. Yes, we had the pandemic and which we have proven our, we have all, all councillors have discharged our duty um, with all good wishes, but I would be grateful if any comment for those community organizations, how we can um, accelerate and help them what they are doing. And uh, very, very lastly, I would like to, I'm sure the whole chamber will join with me and convey our good wishes to those volunteers who are 
active in fighting the rising cost of property and, and so thank you chair and thanks once again for your time in this time Uh, shall I come back, Chair? Yes, please. Before I yeah. uh, before I lose my hair at one pound eighty four a litre. Oh, I know. But apparently, thank it goodness has for electric cars. Oh well, yeah, apparently it has stabilised. But what a what a rate to stabilise at. But um, for, firstly, um, firstly, um, thank 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 you for thank you for the best wishes for me. Um, I um, I've cancelled everything else that I'm doing today, uh, but I didn't want to cancel this, and um, I hope you'll take that um, take that in the spirit that uh, it's meant, um, uh, and it's important that this um, economic strategy has proper scrutiny and timely scrutiny. So um, I am um, I'm glad that glad that I'm able to be here, albeit on a screen. And um, on the point around volunteers, um, our volunteers have continued to be magnificent, both. Um, both prior to the pandemic, particularly during the pandemic, but since, I think one of the one of the gains that we've seen um, as a consequence of the pandemic with all the negatives is is that um, that massive engagement in volunteering, and it's good that so many people have kept that up. Um, that work is principally, in terms of the county council support for volunteering activities, that is principally covered by Victoria Wilson, um, and um, through her um, through her community's portfolio, I've no doubt she can. Um, she can speak to you about that um, regarding regarding economic participation. I think that is that is highlighted in the um, in the strategy, and particularly again, it's around that strand of um, of jobs that are that are higher skilled, higher paid, but also have high social value and high satisfaction because we recognise that not all jobs that we would want people to do um, are going to have a high level qualification attached to them or high paid. But it, it, it's good jobs that are important to us. Um, in terms of the activities that we undertake to, to to make sure that people are engaging with that agenda and, and improving their their living standards as a consequence, um, again that that sits one level below the strategy. But I know we had some good discussion about that in in full council last week as well, um, uh, courtesy of Councillor Arshad um, Afsar's um, question to me. Um, so I know all members have seen that detail recently. Um, hopefully that covers everything. Happy to come back if I've missed anything at all. Thank you. I'm grateful for this, and I'm sure your door is always open for us if, if we come across anything. It really is. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Flunder. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I just want to say thanks for, for the report and, and the, the plan itself. Um, I'm, I'm very happy that you've mentioned flexibility as being quite an important element in terms of we don't know what's going to be happening next. Training I'll come back to at the end because I think that's also very important. Um, but the areas that I think that might be slightly better if we could maybe improve the idea, and it all relates back to the monitoring, which the chair and others have brought back uh, at the beginning, is for town centres in particular, and car parking strategies and things like that, which aren't in our domain, I realise that. But um, some idea of, of some strategy that we are providing as to how successful that's going to be in terms of footfall and things like that, which might be useful and interesting not just for ourselves, but in the in the tiered working relationship with district councils. Um, I think that might be something. Now, I might be going nitpicking and getting into too much detail, but um, you mentioned KPIs and the idea of trying to have some uh, uh, return, you know, on, on our money, as it were. Um, and I do think that the monitoring um, is something that I, I want to plug a bit more, really. I do think that it could be quite easy for us to, to overlook things and areas where there are issues and, and not come back to them and not visit the difficult questions. And I do think that we do need to have something like that. We did have a dashboard at one time. I don't know whether members remember. I don't know whether I'm the only one left now. But um, we had a, a, an area, a, a breakdown by division at one point in terms of jobs and where it was and, and the hierarchy and all the rest of it, uh, which was about three years ago, I think. And that hasn't really been followed up on since. But I do think if we can include members, have some idea of feedback from each of the districts in, in particular and others uh, and, and divisions if necessary within the towns, then I do think that would be quite interesting and useful for us to have a look at. Um, now, I don't know whether that's going to create too much work or anything, but that's certainly some sort of dashboard or something fairly straightforward, not looking for anything too complex, but something that we could maybe then suck all the members in, not just the members of this committee, but everyone, 
so that they can see where the, the strategy is, is actually improving um, relationships with employment and things like that. Now, I know that you do have employment figures, you do have other things like that, so it's just a question, potentially, hopefully, of just bringing, bringing that together and having a division breakdown, if nothing else. Um, finally, I'll come back to, to training again, because I do think that one of the issues that might stop us from developing this strategy is that we don't have the skilled workforce, and I know that we've brought this up before, and I know you keep mentioning it and everything else. I actually attended the HS2 skills event that was two days ago, and it was very last minute sent out to people. I don't know whether anyone else here managed to attend that particular one hour. Sorry? No, no. Well, I, I very luckily managed to do something. I can't remember what it was, but it just triggered, and it just came up, and I just went on it. Um, overnight, I think it popped into the mailbox on Monday or something. But yeah, just to say, Chairman, it was only actually yes. offered out to yourself mm -hmm. and the Vice Chairman. Mm -hmm. uh, it was restricted. Um, ah, right, days, okay. So. Got you. Understand. Um, it would have been perhaps preferable if the whole because of our work that we've already done uh, with training, particularly with HS2 itself, that that would have been uh, sort of courtesy to ask the whole the whole committee. But I did ask Chairman, but. As I say, it was restrict they wanted to restrict attendees. There's two more events coming up, and I do wonder if you could perhaps go back with the Chair's permission to, to do that so that we can attend the future show. And I do think for the members um, who attended what we saw in the first place, I know we were very impressed with what was going on. There's no reason why we have to be restricted to that. And similarly, I don't understand why an officer couldn't, couldn't be on that call as well, unless they were. And, uh, sorry? We did. We did. Okay. Marvellous. Thanks. Um, so if you want to, I've written a page and a half of notes <laughs> from that, and I can maybe let Jonathan know that and send out what we've did, done or something else on that front. So that's, a, that's an aside, the training and what's happening there. But I do think they had some good ideas about trying to get people interested and excited about following engineering and other uh, high, more sort of high level qualifications. Anyway, so if you can go back to my monitoring element, thank you. Daryl, did you want, you put your hand up, but Philip, then Daryl. That's great. Thanks, Chair. Um, and thanks, Keith. Um, yeah, so what we um, it, again, it, this this thing is a question about what sits within the strategy, and then and then what sits within the delivery plans um, that underpin it. So what we um, what we will propose to do, and I think this is probably what Daryl's put his hand up to to talk about in 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 some detail, is um, underneath each of the key themes that we've got here, we will we will develop a delivery plan um, which will will have KPIs in it. Um, and that that will be a a dynamic delivery plan so we can monitor those kpis but we can also look at whether they're relevant over time and that's why we don't want it to sit within the strategy because you, the risk is that you end up monitoring the wrong things um so that that's what we propose to do um daryl did you want to come in and put a bit more flesh on the bones of that it was just to say that uh, as well as those, ca the KPIs rather than targets are really important because it gives you that flexibility but allows you to track progress. Having it against the delivery plan allows you to understand the interventions, the outputs and the progress they're making or not. Uh, but as I pointed out, on, I think it's page 20 in our packs, the ambitions page in the strategy, it's got six points around where we want to be by 2030. So underneath each of those, we'll be able to have a series of KPIs as well, which will give us a sense of progress. Um, so I think absolutely the point is well made and that, that will be handled through the delivery planning process and brought back here on a regular basis and updated. On, the, on the, the last skills point, we had our assistant director for skills at the HS2 session, Tony Baines. Um, you may recall cabinet invest... Yeah, we, we had um, an extra £1 million invested into economic activity by this cabinet, I think it was a year and a half ago now. Um, and the forward plan for how we spend that was signed off about two months ago by Cabinet. And a big part of that is around creating a jobs brokerage service within the County Council, which links in with the likes of HS2, other developers, and, and, and does what it says on the tin, which is about helping connect people to those opportunities or the opportunities to upskill and then access those opportunities. But again, through the delivery plan progress reports, you'll be able to see how that's developing and the impact it's having. Thank you very much for that. Uh, on those six ambitions, um, I do want to support um, Saeed on this one in terms of, of small businesses. Um, I would like that added somewhere along the line because without the small businesses, the bigger businesses will suffer. And it's development of those small businesses and those key skills that can then be upgraded, uh, and particularly with the environment and, as was mentioned, hydrogen and everything else involved in it, that will then go on to 
support the bigger businesses that we, we have the bigger um, employee numbers, etc. So if, if we could do something with small business and units and all that other stuff, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll come back on that if I can, Chair. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yep, yep. Carry on. That's great. So one of one of the one of those strands in the document is around um, is around startup and step up businesses, and that that sort of captures what um, what, what what Keith was just talking about. Um, so strategies are about choices, and what what we are principally um, concerned to try and shift the dial on is a the volume of startup businesses that we have. As we know Stavage is a good place to set up a business. They, they tend to do well when they are set up, but we don't have as many startups as other comparable parts of the country. So we want to increase the volume of those. But then the other thing we want to do is to encourage more step up businesses. So the ones that go from being that very small scale of a startup to the next size um, beyond that. So they're larger employers and larger contributors um, to our prosperity. So within that, um, I think we can capture that, that point regarding supporting small businesses but what we're what we're not going to do is um, massively focus on supporting small businesses that, that purposefully don't want to grow um, because our, our strategy is around is around driving economic growth um, and and jobs that add value to um, to people um, so as I say strategies are our choices that's where our focus lies we have um, the other thing I I must say is, of course, we have provided an enormous amount of support to small businesses over the last two years um, during the pandemic. Um, this authority and our partners have really put our shoulders to the wheel in terms of supporting those businesses. But within the strategy, we're, we're pushing those startups and those um, those step ups that are, that are going to grow and employ more people. Uh, thank you that, Philip. I think my comments are really more around it, and this particularly relates to the Moorlands. I'm not sure about the other areas so much, but it's, it's having the physical units, smaller units, smaller business units. That, that's the bit that doesn't seem to be quite adding up. Um, so you can gather startups, you can do other things. It's, it's having that little, as you say, it's that missing, the, top, the, the bottom few steps is the, what's missing at the moment in some areas. Yeah, okay. that's fine. So I, 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 I'm... So that is something that we're very well aware of. It's not unique to the Moorlands. Um, and um, in, in Staffordshire, there's a particular challenge with, with light industrial units. Um, so we have our enterprise centres, um, which are which are a very successful, um, very successful programme in terms of providing space for space for businesses. We know that there is a problem. It's, it is particularly that next size up. So that step up work that I talked about, I've been to businesses um, both in, in our enterprise centres and elsewhere, who said they'd love to grow, they'd love to take on more work, but they can't find that next size of premises. Um, so we are working on that. It's going to be a collaborative effort, though, with um, the local planning authorities, um, but also with private business in terms of try, trying to work with um, developers to make it more investable to build those sort of facilities, as well as possibly building some of our own. But um, it, it is overall going to be a collaborative effort. So sorry, I didn't entirely pick up on the point you were trying to make, but hopefully that gives you a better answer. Thank you. And if you can just provide something within the plan in the in time, that would be great. Thank you. Darryl, did you uh, want to Hopefully it's in there. So if I draw your attention to page 36 of the report uh, under the what we'll do for startups and um, scale ups, first bullet point is around that provision of suitable sites and premises for new businesses and businesses that are seeking to grow through incubator spaces and expansion and grow on spaces. So it's, it's a very clear, deliberate bullet point within our strategy. It's a really important point, which is well made, but um, I hopefully I assure you it's in the strategy. Councillor Smith. Thank you, Chairman. C could I first just mention on something we were saying earlier on about the HS2 meeting? I was invited to that, not given a date or time. I went back again and asked what the date or time was, and I've not had a reply to that email. So I'm disappointed about that because my division is where HS2 hits us, and it's got one of the most critical areas that are happening at the moment. That wasn't the purpose of me wanting to speak. Chairman, I'm, I'm reassured that we've got a solid plan that's going to take us forward. If you don't have a plan, you can't identify where you're failing. And I'm not suggesting we're going to fail because we may also succeed. 
that you need to be able to look at where success and failure is taking place. And um, I just wonder whether it's significant that it's a item 13 in the report which says we will continue to manage and monitor our progress in the delivery of the strategy. Chairman, I think that that is probably the most important paragraph that there is in the whole report because if we don't monitor where we're going to, we don't know whether we're succeeding. And I think also, Chairman, we've looked um, with, with various members on things, and I made a note here, um, rising cost of fuel, although it's come down a bit today with Rishi, um, the problems of inflation, increased um, rates of um, borrowing, um, the construction industry, which I think is in the most awful mess at the moment, um, both of my children are trying to undertake at the moment extensions to their homes and um, one of them, the um, three people that he's trying to get quotes from will not quote. They'll only give him um, a view subject to inflation and I don't know how anybody can actually work under those circumstances. Um, I think that um, we look at inflation, we look at the problems that we've got in that respect I also look at um, the number of people who are all trying to do the same thing. And um, I think that uh, the county pulling together the district and boroughs on uh, the way that the leaders will work together is a tremendous advance in the way that we go. But I must say, Chairman, I throw my hands up in horror when I see that my local parish council has applied for a £36,000 grant from the government and got it on investigating what the prospects are as far as uh, heating alternatives are concerned. Because frankly, I don't object to them having the 36,000, but what I do object to is the fact that they have not chosen, nor are they prepared to, to talk to the district council or the county council so that they can feed in to what's going on and make a serious contribution to the way we go forward. Chairman, um, I I think that uh, we also need to go back again and look, and I know that this is my own personal uh, thing, which is something that I set up with Litchfield District Council, uh, but this council has a partnership uh, that still exists with the Birmingham University, and um, the uh, person who is responsible for hydrogen development um, is a is a Birmingham University professor, um, Yulong Ding, who I've met several times and I have a great regard for. We ought really to be making use of all of our opportunities and I think that that's something that we are failing to do. Um, Chairman, I, I think that um, we need to make sure that we're all pulling in the same direction and we need, Chairman, to make sure that we're fast on our feet to be able to react when things change. And I do feel that things are going to change very, very rapidly. And if we're not fast on our feet, we're going to get legged over. Thank you, Chairman. Philip, are you responding to that? Yes, that's absolutely. I think, I think there's some good points made there, particularly about the, about the collaborative working and um, parish councils are, are a tier of government. I would expect them to want to cooperate with other tiers in the way that we do very effectively um, between the county council and the districts and boroughs. So um, that's that's a good point. And you know, we, we deliver things best when we've got we, we've got that closeness to local communities. Regarding hydrogen, um, we are fortunate in Staffordshire that um, we have um, we have Kiwi University and we have Vice Chancellor there, Trevor McMillan. Um, who is, um, I think I'm right in saying, and um, Daryl can correct me if I'm wrong about this, but he, he, is, the, um, he is the lead vice chancellor for the, um, the Midlands Engine Hydrogen um, Technology Strategy work. Um, and obviously in Kiel's case, their, their focus is on, is, is on home heating, um, but, um, but we are very well connected into that work. Um, and it has, as uh, Councillor Hutton was saying, it's, it, it, it's got enormous potential for our economy in Staffordshire across both um, travel applications and, and heating applications. Daryl, I don't know whether you want to say anything more on that. That's fine, Philip. 
four Thanks. marks then. Thanks Great. very much, Philip. You're doing extremely well. Yeah. Hope you get better soon. Uh, any further questions? Whoever's got the phone on, turn it off now. I'm not going to look in any direction. Please. I didn't think I had to tell members to turn their phones off. Councillor Smith. If it's my phone you're referring to, uh, my phone is integrated with the system that I'm listening to, yeah. and so I can't turn my phone off. Okay, if there are no further questions, we've got three recommendations, and uh, if I, I, I'll read them out if you wish. Uh, recommendation A, considering, yeah. consider and comment upon the draft strategy, which we have done. Um, Consider and recommend interventions. I hope that um, Jonathan's been, pen's been on fire. <laughs> if I can just point out the, the need to work with small businesses and how we can help the voluntary groups uh, deliver what they need to deliver. Um, and obviously the working with the university as, as David Smith has just said, and how quickly we can react to change. I know that Darrell is very fast on his feet, so I don't have any issues. <laughs> Um, is very stealth-like these days, and now my laptop's just gone off. And then the last one is um, to invite the deputy leader and the cabinet member back um, to scrutiny every three months. Are you happy with that, Philip? Yeah, I'm very happy with that. And so what we'll do in addition is when um, when we get those those points from John, we'll just provide a response um, to each of those, just so that you know um, you know what that is. Um, but um, oh, and one other thing, forgive me, if um, if committee members want to write to me um, individually with, with their own points, um, whether they're ones they've made today or whether they're additional ones, please do. Um, so we want to gather in as many comments as we can to um, make this uh, make the strategy as fit for as possible. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, are those recommendations moved? Aye. Thank Aye. you very much. Um, you're free to go, Philip, and... Get yourself a hot water bottle and a hot toddy, I think. I don't mind admitting I'm going to bed. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Get well soon. See you. Thank you very much. See you soon. Okay, we'll move on to the next item agenda, which is the uh, item five, which is the Staffordshire Standing Advisory Council on Religious, religious Education. Now, we do believe we're meant to have someone online, Mrs Lauren Nicholson-Ward. Yeah, we're expecting a chair in about quarter to three. So Quick any, any two-minute minute tea break then, gents. <laughs> oh, you're desperate How to get out. Uh, can we end the live stream before we all move? Adjourn the meeting. Okay, we'll move on to, um, we're going to move on to the work programme just while we wait for the lady to come online. So the next meeting is the um, 14th of April. And I'll just get my agenda. So we've got the um, digital infrastructure plan, which is Councillor Simon Tagg, Daryl and James. Um, and we've got the um, Highways Infrastructure Stru uh, Transformation Plan, um, which is a massive, massive document, guys. Um, my plea to you is to read it. Don't come unprepared to that meeting. Um, it is two days of reading, but it, it's massive. And if you turn up unprepared, it won't be me with the big stick. It will be Daryl and David Williams. He won't be used. Uh, so the work programme, obviously, that is the last meeting of the municipal year. And the May meeting will be a planning meeting for the next year. Um, and we've got three hours on that meeting. Um, and I've had an email from Philip White to ask if we can put the, um, which is what you were just talking about, Councillor Hutton, rural economic strategy um, onto that May meeting. So we can probably, we can either do it first or we can do it last once we've decided on our plan, whichever works easiest. 
gives direction. So it's a real difficulty to be involved in the economic... micro -gem. Sorry. The, the, the issue for me between the economic strategy, the rural infrastructure strategy, and uh, the, corporate it, the corporate plan is this integration, how, how they all work together. The last thing I want is strategies that are, there's one team in the council pursuing it, another team, because these are actually all integrated. And the one thing that this committee looks for, generally speaking, under the chair's leadership, is we're looking for that integration, yeah. aren't we? Yeah. Definitely. Darrell, did you want to come in? Yeah, hopefully I can give you some reassurance around that. So, that, so the first thing to say is that all sits within my department. So um, as a leadership team, we look at those together as a collective. Yeah. Um, the rural economic strategy falls out of the economic strategy you've considered today. So that's the, that's the economic strategy for Staffordshire. What we've got is a how do we deliver this in rural Staffordshire plan effectively. So how do you translate what we've discussed today into rural Staffordshire? So you'll see that golden thread in that link. The digital infrastructure strategy obviously supports a lot more than just our economic ambitions. It supports a wide range, but you'll be able to see through the presentation how it all fits together. So we'll hopefully give you that assurance. Uh, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. It covers more. Uh, some of the uh, my farming friends are talking about um, the larger farmers who are doing a lot of arable. We're talking about having integr having self-driving machines uh, or machines. Uh, that actually know exactly where to change the fertilizer or, or spray and all that sort of thing, and they're relying on satellites. Um, so, I, did you want to come in quickly on that on the work program? Th thank you, Chair. Um, I welcome this rural economic strategy as well. At the same time, if we want to do a proper contrast and comparison as well, may I suggest as well at the uh, in the following meetings or so, we should consider the urban strategy as well. And I'm not suggesting any north to south or urban or rural divide, because we are the councillors for not only one division councillor, but all staff share. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, that's the, May, uh, the April meeting on April the 14th. And as I said, please, please, please read the Highways Transformation Programme plan. Um, and then we'll, we'll sort May out and we'll do the planning and we'll allow Philip White to come in with his, with his report. I do believe that we've got um, Mrs. Nicholson Ward online now. So yeah, we'll, hi there. Hello there, welcome. Um, so we'll, we'll move on to item five, which is the Staffordshire Standing Advisory Council on Religious Education. Now, this obviously is not our remit. It is a report for us to note, but... While we've got um, Lauren online, does anybody have any questions on the report? Councillor Hutton. I was just going to say, uh, none really, Chair. It was a very full report, and uh, there was no nothing that I could see that, um, from being a committee member on this committee, that I'd want to question. Um, but I do note it. Thank you. Any further questions from members? Lauren, is there anything you want to um, highlight to us while we've got you online? No, I'm just glad that the report's been well received and obviously we are available to answer any questions if you had any. I'm very glad actually the councillors have not put any questions to me because I'm standing in for the far more knowledgeable uh, Reverend Michael who would have been much more adept at answering any. That's fine. If anybody does have any questions, we can send, if you send those to Jonathan and we'll make sure those get answered um, if you think of anything. Thank you, Lauren, for, uh, for joining Thank us you. briefly. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, the, we've just done the work programme. So date of next meeting is Thursday the 14th of April. Please note the time of 10 o'clock in the morning and not 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and item eight, we haven't got any um, excluded business, so I draw the meeting to a close at 14.54. Thank you for your attendance this afternoon, and um, please all stay safe and COVID-free. Thank you very much. Thank you.